We are so excited to be able to bring you this bonus episode where we got to meet Tembi Locke. She was just a joy, pure sunshine to meet and get to talk to. We were um, we were really talking about her series and her production and being on podcasts and all of that. But at the heart, Tembi's an author, and from scratch was a bestseller. It was a novel that was from the heart. It was her own story of her family, and we wanted to bring this episode back during this month where we're talking about writers and authors to kind of celebrate that part of her journey. So we hope you enjoy revisiting this episode with Tembi Law. Tempe, thank you so much for being here. I, ha- I told Emma I was texting her last week. I was traveling with my daughter and I was in a hotel and there you were on Hoda and Jenna. And I was like, oh my God, we have Tempe next week and she's on the Today Show and she's talking to Hoda and Jenna. We're oh, so excited. So I'm really, you. really excited to see, to talk to you and meet you. Oh, thank you. Likewise, you know, I, I love this, the, the, sort of um, concept behind your podcast and this, these conversations. And so I feel honored to be here. And um, I like, you know, a long form, let's chat it up, let's learn some things kind of conversation. Oh, great, great. Well, thank you. Thank you. So you are, you're everywhere. You're everywhere. I said, I was doing the research for the pod, for, for this episode. And I was like, I never had to work so hard because something new kept popping up. It was so amazing. So I'm looking at, you know, obviously from scratch and, and lifted and all of that. And then I'm like, then Bluebird, Bluebird pops up. Yeah. And then, I mean, you guys, you and your sister and you are on your own. I mean, so many exciting things. Are you pinching yourself a little bit? I am pinching myself. I am pinching myself. And it is like, you know, the the best way I can describe it is first of all, taking huge leaps of faith. So there's that. And, and I, I have to start by saying that because it is something not to be underestimated, particularly when you're a creative and when you're a woman. And in some ways I am building the bridge while I'm crossing it. I love that. Yeah. And yeah. so I'm aware of that every day. And sometimes that can feel like stress. <laughs> oh my God, I'm building the bridge. What's happening? And other days right, it's right. like, you know what? We're doing it. We're getting across and it's happening. And I'm able to express some part of myself that is seeking to be expressed creatively mm-hmm. as a storyteller, as a woman, as a human. And that's a privilege and I'm, I'm, you know, I, I am pinching myself every day. Yeah. I love that. I love that shift. Cause I challenge myself sometimes too, to say the stress, the busyness, I want, I need to sit in gratitude of it because it is because people love women in entertainment. They love in her words. They love, they love your projects. They want your voice in more things. And so how do we, how do we sit in gratitude for that stress and that, those long, busy days? Yeah, and it's a reminder, you know, that um, what is what it is in service to, meaning it's not busyness for the sake of busyness. Right. And so sort right. of always, for me, what I'm finding is circling back to what I call the purity of purpose of the why I'm doing it. I love that. Um, it really helps clarify on the more exhausting days or the days when, you know, I feel like, mm, you know, what next? (laughs) And also, 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 let me not underestimate. I also have become aware of the fact that I have to reset and I have to rest in order to fulfill the purpose at hand. It's not just busy to be busy because that is serving no one. And how, how do you, how do you find that? Do you find that you're letting yourself rest organically? Do you find that, no, I actually put it on my calendar. No, I have to put it on my calendar. Yeah. yeah, I have to pull it on my calendar. I, I figured out there's some core, what I call care pillars for myself uh that if I, I just build them into my schedule. Um, and, and then that's how it gets done, you know, and I try to mm-hmm. leave gaps. Like I know that my most um, creative time of day, I know when that is. And so mm-hmm. I try to protect at least two days 
in during the week when I know that's my zone. And I right, tried not right. to put anything on the calendar during that, just to see what might land because that's how right, I work right. intuitively. I sort of like, mm -hmm. you know, something, an idea will come to me, it'll spark. And then I want to follow it and I want to follow it. And, but I need the open space and the blue sky and the time right. and the rest and the restoration to be able to do that. People don't give thinking time enough credit. Oh, it's reason. everything. My old company no, no. used to call it thinking time. It's everything. And they really, yeah, they really wanted us to even put it in our work day. Like you can't be a good strategic thinker or a good executive or a good problem solver if you don't have time to think about anything. Absolutely. And it is it is something. So with your with your pillars, we'll get into the work. But I usually get into the free time later, but I'm like, okay, let's just go. This is <laughs> But is it, is it real? Is it other like watching or reading or other creativity? Is it exercise or oh, is it just like a completely little, zoned out? What, what does help that? It's a little bit of everything. So I kind of, um, it's everything from cooking and gardening to taking walks. It's usually actually not watching other media. Okay. It's actually usually not my access point, yeah. my uh -huh. access point is usually something connected to nature and grounding myself mm -hmm. because a part mm -hmm. of the nature of the work, um, producing and writing and creating as different from being an actor is it's very much in and of the cognitive and of the head, you know, that has mm -hmm. to always be connected to the heart. But in my days as an actor, what I knew is a lot of the exercises that we did before rehearsal is getting in your body. So for right. me, what I understand is I had tried to really somatically reset my body so that the mind will follow isn't that interesting so and for it, me mean, it's it, yeah yeah and even the nature the fresh air oh, the sun, walks it, i and i don't know how many years because there's been 50 some of them already <laughs> that i will think why do i feel so crappy why do i feel so crappy well it's because you sat at your desk all day sure. and you didn't get outside and the next day it's like even taking my dog for 20 minutes or whatever it's like why do i do this to myself where i don't get out and i don't breathe fresh air and i don't you know exercise or or just move like that but it's it is it's so true it's yeah. so true how it, much all of that connection helps it does and it um allows me to be able to one see what's seeking to be lived within within me creatively mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. also usually is a portal to my curiosity and i think that tethers back to childhood when you're like really? literally playing in the sandbox uh -huh. you're uh -huh. literally just riding your bike down the street you know trying to like and race your friends story, you know and it's that free story. state so yeah. in some ways, as an adult, I'm trying to sort of bring those moments into my weekly life, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, daily life. No, oh, that is, it's, it's so helpful. And it's really uh, that mind, body, soul, just, you know, feeding that, yeah. just continually to feed that. So talk, speaking of feeding, um, with... So I wanted to talk to you, and like I said, when I started looking at some of your your new projects, and I'm, I'm really interested in, in I love the idea of Bluebird, Bluebird, and what it is, but starting with From Scratch, and your obviously very personal story, and, and you know, your life, to these other stories of other people's, I... I you you were so vulnerable, and you and you told your story your 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 husband and your family and your you know all of 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 your real story. And now looking at some of these other true stories, I was curious if um, if that's easier. If that's something that you were ready to be like, okay, I'm done talking about myself now and telling my stories. But, but these true stories, and I, I mean, we know the best stories come from, you know, what you know and who you are and, and that truth, um, but kind of evolving from your own stories to others' true stories. I love that evolution. I want to hear a little bit about that. Yeah. Thank you for asking that. I think, you know, certainly, well, first of all, having written the memoir, right, which is my most deeply personal mm -hmm. story, mm -hmm. um, told in my voice, unadulterated, just everything. That's what memoir is, right? So 
from that to the adaptation of the book was the first sort of leap in expanding a narrative and changing it, right? Because it is an adaptation. And if, mm -hmm. for those who watch the series, you know, the character has a different name from me. Uh, there are facts that are different. Um, the right, character right. who's my mom is clearly not my mom. Like there's so many aspects of that that already move the needle from a real life, um, you know, as it happened experience to what does it mean to creatively for a new medium, expand a story, always keeping the essence and the heartbeat and the pulse of that story there. So in a certain way, I had the exercise of doing it a little bit from scratch mm -hmm. because it mm -hmm. was not the book on the page. It was sort of um, an emotional truth and a rendering of it, but it wasn't a pure, pure straight, um, as I don't think cinema could be or film or television could be from the book. And I told that story. It's good. It's it, it lives forever. Right. Yeah. And if I am going to explore my own inner life, I would do that perhaps in um, creative nonfiction in the form of a book or on the page. In fact, there's mm -hmm. an audio book um, that I'm, I'm, I'm beginning to sort of noodle with and work on. But now the joy of having had the experience of adapting for screen to know what that's like to do at the most intimate level, to be able to say, oh, uh, because Attica, my sister, Attica Locke, who is a screenwriter mm -hmm. and also a novelist, and her book, Bluebird, Bluebird, that you reference, is a part of what we are adopt, uh, adapting next. Mm -hmm. To be, and those characters, that's fiction. The book is fiction. Oh. Bluebird, Bluebird is fiction. I mean, it's loosely oh. based on some real oh but it, it is it is it is okay. a book of fiction i thought it was based on a true character no okay. no 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 no, okay. no, 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 no. there's elements that obviously you know and you'd have to okay. Back okay. It <laughs> to see yeah. like you know to talk about the origin story of her characters and all that but so in a way it's very freeing to be able to work on material that isn't so close to you right you right. know and it is freeing to be able to um um invent where needed you know, and it was funny because when I was writing the, when I was writing from scratch, the book and, mm -hmm. um, checking in with my sister because she was, you know, a five time novelist and like, oh my God, you've had a career as a, like a writer. Like, how do you, how do people do this? And she said, <laughs> oh honey, I make it all up. You, what you're doing is infinitely harder because you're trying to tell the truth of a lived experience. And mm -hmm. so, um, you know, there, that, that, that there's, there's beauty in both. There is a project that I can't speak, you know, truly freely about because I don't want to jinx it, that would be based on a person's true life story. And that okay. we would have to, you know, really be in a very intimate and close relationship with that family about what does mm -hmm. it mean to take your story and put it on screen. And Attic and I are uniquely positioned to be able to talk to a family about that because we did it. And do you think... I would think if it was if it was me, I would trust someone like you and Attica to to tell my story because you've already done me. I'm opening it all up and telling my own first. Yeah, I I, I would hope so. And that is, you know, we really get it. And Attica and I are deeply, um, we're very much about how something is made is as important mm -hmm. as what is being made. Mm -hmm. And so the way that you engage with um, someone who has had a direct lived experience and you say, okay, talk to me about that. Like walk me through all of it. And that's, you know, part of my training as an actor. I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I want to know everything. Right. And now, okay. Out of all of that, that you gave us, we're going to take this, 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 and this from, and those are going to be our non-negotiables as we go okay. forward, okay. but other things will change. They have to change because we're creating a piece of art. We're mm -hmm. not doing, you know, um, an exact rendering of, you know, of what happens. Yeah, well, I hope yeah, that, I hope that answers the question. Yeah, no, that is, that's very interesting. With all of these, so this evolution of, of you through writing your memoir and then it becoming, and by the way, we are, 
we girl crush on Lauren Neustadt here, here, like nobody's business. She's been on the podcast. She was at the summit. We love, love, love Lauren and the Hello Sunshine okay. team. Oh. I could sit here and talk for the next right? 20 minutes about Lauren Neustadter <laughs> on so many levels. She is, yes, the real deal, oh, we love full her. of heart and passion. And she is someone that you want to be in the boat with when the seas get rough <laughs> and like well, the storms and, are coming. Lauren is like, we are going to do this. Lifts up everyone else around her. Oh, for sure. I mean, we're having conversations about the po on the podcast and at the summit and Lauren is all about, no, you want to hear from so-and-so. No, you want to hear, I want you to hear this story. I, She's I, I mean, talk about a She's, champion. She is excellent yeah. at curating. She is excellent at lifting people, you know, women up. I mean, look, um, she was the person who Attica approached yeah. with from scratch you know, when it was just a manuscript and it's she, so you know, and, and Lauren, you know, <laughs> I think she tells the story that, you know, when, when Attica said, Hey, my sister's written a book. Lauren was kind of like, Oh, great. <laughs> you know, like just what <laughs> any <laughs> producer wants to hear, you know, I think she's just like, you know, great. Like the valet's cousin also wrote a book. Like everybody's written right, a book, right. what the heck? but she read it and we're here now. And the show was made and Lauren, you know, at every turn was right there, really making sure. Talk about trust. Talk about trusting that we uh -huh. could, um, that I knew my story as close as it could be to the heartbeat and pulse of what mattered and what mm -hmm. I was seeking and what Attica and I were seeking to do by bringing the story to screen. Lauren was like, okay, yeah, we're here. We're gonna make it happen. And her taste, oh, she just has, I mean, her taste is just, yeah. And I can't imagine a, a better person for any project. I mean, I would think any project is, is your baby, but that project is tenfold, you know, because it's, it's your baby you created and it's your own personal story. Yes. Yes. Is, um, so all of these, I'm hearing about all your, your kind of your evolution of these roles. So you were, you're training to be an actor and, 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 and a working actor and, and a novel, then, and a novelist, maybe not planned so much, but became, you know, to write your own story. And then you're adapting it for the screen and then you're producing and you're right. All of these pieces, do you, do they, do, does it, does it help to have all of those, all of those skills together? Do you have a favorite? Do you, are you now thinking, oh, I might never act again, or I might never write another, or are they all help? What did they all feed on each other? I guess. Not only, yes, not only do they all feed on each other, and not only do I not have a favorite because I guess I don't think in that way. I feel like um, just like some days I wake up and I want to wear jeans and other days I want to wear a leather skirt <laughs> or, you know, a, a caftan. <laughs> like, you know, I, I, they all have a place. Okay. And, okay. Um, you know, I sort of look at my creative life. I was thinking about this and to some degree, everything I've done, I look at as like just a creative laboratory to play mm -hmm. and explore and it all is additive to the totality of my, meaning there's parts of my voice that I can sharpen in a certain area and in a certain art form. Mm -hmm. And then when I now see myself in a different art form, there are places where I can practice other parts of um, my voice, my creativity. Um, I'm deeply, deeply interested in learning always. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, need, I love and need all of these places to do the work. Let's know that I, I, we hear that so much from women and, and, you know, I love the different origin stories of, of why, why you can't became a, a the, you know, the term multi hyphenate or whatever we want to, but I, there's so many different ways that those that comes about and you know whether it's somebody that was like I wasn't getting parts that I like so I started writing well, parts yeah. or yeah that that they For come sure. about in such different ways but these women that are not they're not they're not staying in a lane and they're not they don't even think that way that they need to stay in a lane 
Well, I feel like, I mean, for me, it is always a surprise to me <laughs> when I wake up and I'm like, oh, I'm doing this thing now. <laughs> You know, I mean, it, it, it was never, it was never on my, you know, vision board to uh -huh. be a, pro a producer. It was not on my vision board to be a screenwriter. It wasn't my, on my mm -hmm. vision board to be an, uh, uh, you know, a, a memoirs. What was always clear and consistent for me was that I always was looking for ways to express parts of myself or humanity or a particular experience. And I was always looking for what's the way to express that. So for example, as an actor, as a journeyman actor for 20 plus years, there were times when I had roles that were really beautiful and could express some aspect of something I was curious about or even sometimes what was happening in my own life. And then there were whole parts of my creativity that could not be fit into or be expressed to mm -hmm. your point, getting the parts I wanted to get mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. an actor. And my writing came about not because I had the professional aspirations of being a writer, but I always do something because I have to do it for me. There's a question I have in me that is seeking to be answered. Mm -hmm. And if I mm -hmm. can't, and, and I'm kind of stumbling forward, trying to find the right thing, the right art form to explore and unpack that question. And so for me, when I lost my husband, after 10 years of being his caregiver, that was a unique experience that I could not fit into any role as an actor. Right. I couldn't yeah. fit it into um, a one woman show. I couldn't fit mm -hmm. it into, you know, a singular screenplay or an essay. And what I realized mm -hmm. over time was, oh, this is a long form nonfiction story. It needs to be inside mm -hmm. of a book. That mm -hmm. is the scope of this. So now, how do I do that? Mm -hmm. And then when the book came out and it was clear that, you know, it, it was Reese's Book Club and then it was, you know, picked up with Hello Sunshine and, and we, mm -hmm. we sold it to Netflix. It became about, oh, now as a producer, what is my role? in this adaptation. And I very, I knew that I was a first time screenwriter, first time producer. I'm not coming to the table with the most experience, clearly. But what I am coming to the table with is an, 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 an innate and an in-depth understanding of the material in the way that no one else on the planet has. I'm coming to the table with um, the knowledge that I also know how to sit back and listen and wait for my turn. And what I mean by that is everybody in the room, when someone, when everyone else has more experience than you do, the best thing you can do, even though you may have, you may be the author of the material, you may be right, the, right. the person it's based on, your best way forward is actually to sit and listen. And listen, absolutely. And I knew that I could bring um, I wanted to, especially when we got into production, I wanted to bring to our set culture, the kind of set culture that I had always loved as an actor and always mm -hmm. wanted to mm -hmm. experience. Meaning I was the kind of actor, and I still am, I can go on a set and immediately feel the vibe. I'm like, okay, everybody's stressed to the hilt or this isn't a great work culture. And I was mm -hmm. like, and it, it always affected me in some way, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, well, you know, observe that, push it aside, now let's do the work. But I thought, what would it be like if you didn't have to have all of that? And so we really tried to, with From Scratch, create a beautiful work culture that was um, loving and kind and made space for the fact that we're making this really deeply intimate material in the middle of, right. you know, what was still really kind of like the pandemic. We were in the early shows coming back and we mm -hmm. understood the emotional and mental toll of doing this kind of work. And so we tried to also honor that and Hello Sunshine was great in, 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 in Netflix and helping us do that. I feel like I got off the question, but I think we'll- <laughs> No, no, that is, and, and that I, one of the questions I was going, I was gonna, well, two things that that are, that I, w I wanted to ask that are perfect for, for your answer are, was there, was there any, ever any hesitation 
to let the memoir become something else to, to say, I know I don't want my story on screen or, or this was, this was therapeutic. This was cathartic. I, like you said, I know this is a unique story to me, but I don't want it to go any further than my memoir. I don't, was there any hesitation? I was terrified for sure, because mm -hmm. I understood that to do what we were seeking to do meant that we would be putting the story on a global canvas. Right. And sure, a book is that too, but it means that people have to go buy it or take it out of the library. It has to be translated and exit. I knew instantly on Netflix that it would go out in, I don't know, 80, 35 languages, I don't know how many languages around right. the planet right. instantaneously. Right. right. And there's when other people's uh, not, uh, visions were going to be melded with yours. Which it's actually for me story. was not a problem. That I didn't okay. worry about. Actually, okay. I welcomed that. Mm -hmm. And that's because I'd had okay. years in the, I mean, my years as an actor is I understood the collaborative nature of the art form. Yeah, so that okay. never scared me. Actually, I thought, well, let's lean into that. That's going to be actually, that actually is fun. The idea mm -hmm. that, and, and okay. the work then becomes about how does it not veer too far off into some other vision and okay. lose the heartbeat. But I love the collaborative nature of okay. it. That was actually super exciting. I think when you asked me about the fear, that was just me on a very personal tembi, the, yeah. the, the person who had lived at the mother, the widow, the daughter daughter-in-law, right. the daughter, right? The okay. sister on a very personal level, like what does it mean? And so again, when I go back to the purity of purpose, I can, but then what is the, why, why are we doing this? Okay. What is the compelling reason to, because it actually could just live in a book and, mm -hmm. and be, it already, I've done my part, right? I've told my right. story. So right. why this, why now? And I felt as though we had the opportunity as storytellers to step, to tell the story with the adaptation of a black woman's and African Americans global love story, her mm -hmm. eat, pray, love, which had never been done before. Right. Right. So I knew that there was an opportunity to tell the kind of story I had never seen. Mm -hmm. I had never seen myself in that kind of story on screen. Mm -hmm. Right. And I knew that that was a worthy cause. And I yeah. also knew that I wanted to tell a grief story. The way it, the way in which I, you know, don't always see or had not always seen mm -hmm. on screen, mm -hmm. and I wanted to tell the story of family and forgiveness, internationally, cross culturally, interracially, mm -hmm. multilingually, <laughs> and that felt like a compelling first to do on screen. Oh, so absolutely. So then that yeah. becomes my why. So any right. fear that I have. I could push aside because I know I'm in service to something bigger. So although it was always about at the core, yes, based on Tembi's story, but I knew mm -hmm. we were doing something much bigger than me, much bigger mm -hmm. than my, and, my and life. Serve, yeah. Who it could help and who it could serve. That's, that's such an, that's such a, a unique way to look at it. Um, in, like you said, you're in the, the purpose of getting your story out there and letting other people touch it yeah. is it's serving others. Yeah, because it, it, the yeah. writing a memoir is an act of service. People mm -hmm. think it's like, oh, you're just telling your story. No, you, you're, <laughs> I'll be really frank, <laughs> to go in and excavate the hardest parts of your life and offer them up artfully to share is a kind of way of sitting around a campfire and saying, hey, mm -hmm. Let me tell you a story. I went out in the woods. I saw X, Y, and Z. I fought mm -hmm. X, Y, and Z bear. And I've come back to tell you what that looks like. Should mm -hmm. you ever go out in the forest mm -hmm. and have to experience it? That's what really memoir does. Yeah. That's why I read memoir. And so it's not an easy endeavor. And then when we, when we bring that to screen, we're doing that in a different way we're telling yeah. a bigger, a bigger story. And I say that from scratch, the series is doing its medicine in the world. People are finding it, watching mm -hmm. it. I get messages of how it's, how it's yeah, changing yeah. them or changing the way they think about love. And, you know, I, I want to, I always knew that the book was 
at its core a love story about many kinds of love. And mm -hmm. we knew that the series was also that and looking at every type of love from eros to agape. And what that meant for me is if I can be a part of moving the world a little closer to love through the creative efforts that I do in the world, then that is a worthy purpose. Absolutely. And it gets me excited and it also gets me out of the way. And people can kind of find their own yeah. their own We're definition with... in that. Yeah. 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 In their own, yeah. And I'm sure that I'm sure a lot of eyes are opened in different ways as they're reading, as they're watching, because you don't think of a mother-in-law, daughter-in-law love. You don't think of uh, you know that that those aren't the traditional ways, yeah. and that's exactly what what it does. It shows you all of those, yeah. all of those. I mean, there was a per version of From Scratch that you know the pilot is essentially what is your classic rom com movie? They meet, they fall in love, they decide to have their happily ever after. The series right. is what happens thereafter. The right. series right. then, by the end of it, is what does love look like eternally and across mm -hmm. all of time and space after death mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. exploring that and making space for that. And that's the story I want to tell because that's the thing I was asking myself when I wrote the book is like, what does love look like? What does a marriage look like when one partner's gone? Right. And it doesn't, yeah, there, there is no end. And I think that's the, yeah, that's the message that I, you know, watching it and, and the amazing actors that are in it and the story, but that, you know, all of these pieces, it doesn't end. There's okay. no, you know, with so, whether it's a marriage that breaks up, uh, somebody's not, somebody passes away, family members go, you, it doesn't, it doesn't end. And it's such a, and then I'll passing it on to our children and there yes. it's just, or, or even friends, the piece that, that friends are involved and it's not just blood relatives. It's just beautiful. There's, there's such messages there. And I want to, uh, I also want to ask you, you mentioned the, the, the trust with Lauren and with Hello Sunshine and with and with Netflix uh, and my sister what, <laughs> and your sister. Yeah, what what do did you and Attica want to work together? I mean, was that your plan? Well, uh, well before this, but also now that you've worked with these amazing different platforms and different production companies and your own production. What, what does your team look like, I guess, is what, so on these new projects and that project, what, what do you create on set? Do you have a core team that you work with, that you and your sister work with? What does that look like now? Yeah, thank you for asking. It's a great question. Um, Attica and I, I think intuitively and probably, at, there was a time when we were like, we're definitely going to work together, like early on in our, you know, careers. And we were, mm -hmm. you know, um, I helped her get her first agent. Um, we, there was a project, in fact, Bluebird, Bluebird, she's talked about this initially, the book, the seed of the book was actually a screenplay that was at Sundance and, um, you know, and at one point, you know, I was going to be involved in this sort of early iteration of it. And then it sort of like, you know, it didn't go anywhere. She had mm -hmm. went on to have, you know another career as a, as a, as a screenwriter for hire, and then as a novelist. And then there came this moment where she circled back to this seed that had been in the script 20 years earlier. And she was like, let me look at this as a book. Hmm. So in some ways, in some way, you know, we had been circling the wagons of potentially collaborating and informally we were, I mean, meaning like I would check in with her about things I was doing. She would check in with me about things she was doing. We asked mm -hmm. each other's advice, but it was very informal. When From Scratch came along, Attica, and she tells the story, you know, when Lauren was like, we actually want to make this, they were like, and, and, and we want you, Attica, to be a part of it. Attica was like, wait, what? <laughs> she was like, I thought I was just giving you guys this, this thing. I have a whole, and then you know, she was like, I, I, th I have a whole other, you know, I have other things I'm working on, but then it became really clear quickly that we were going to do it together. Yeah. That actually everything had been building up to that moment, right? Sitting in Lauren Neustadter's office, you yeah. know, <laughs> and, and we were like, oh, we're doing this. And then we then put some formal structure around the partnership. Mm -hmm. Because we understood that, yes, we were sisters who were incredibly close and who always have supported each other. But now to do this next level of work together, right? 
and with all of the other producing partners and entities who would come along for the journey of that making mm -hmm. of making of from scratch, we needed to have some relationship pillars and some mm -hmm. partnership pillars in place mm -hmm. um, in order to do the work at the highest and best level that we could do it. And that meant, so we did that. And that looked at times like we would have like sisterly check-ins that were, had nothing to do with work. Um, we would, at the beginning, we were kind of building the bridge as we were going. Right, right. As we were crossing it. So From Scratch is made. We've had lots of learnings from that partnership. And we did it under fire because that was like the hardest probably thing we will ever, you know, produce in a certain way together because it was so close to us and to our hearts. So then when we decided to go forward, continuing to collaborate, it was like, okay, so here's what worked from that. Here's what didn't work. Here's what we changed. Here's what we don't like. And what we began to do was we have um, someone who we work with, who helps us when we get stuck to be like a third okay. party who is like, kind of like a, you know, business partnership coach kind of person uh -huh. where we're like, uh -huh. oh, you know, this is your strength. This is my strength. Where can we not duplicate our work or spin our wheels trying to each do things that aren't our strengths, but like really, and that person helps us to do that. So that's a team member um, that we check in with. We have our, um, our protege and writer assistant, who's Marley Fox, can't shout her out enough. She's fantastic. And she uh, is working with us now in our new deal at, at Universal um, as we we're beginning to develop shows. Um, and I think that, you know, Attica and I each separately have people in our lives who are also a part of our informal team, helping okay. us to support us to do the work that we do. So, um, yeah, I think that's kind of, how we how we do it yeah that's and do you um do you guys do you actually write together ah uh, yes so what we do is we break everything together like all okay. the stories and it's and we get it all the way if we're going to get really granular we get all the way you know to outline and then sometimes we will frankenstein things meaning like take part you take this part and then we do have another session where we come together put it together smooth it over and we do handoffs you take oh, it for okay. a few days do your thing at it you give it back to me i do my zhuzh so by the end of it it's like you can't tell you know, always the beginning, middle, you know, who, oh, the, what? Who, who, so it, it, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. I think that's how we, in terms of script writing, you know, how we uh -huh. do. And I think, but we're finding it's also, um, the process is dictated by the project. Some projects require okay. working differently. Some things, right. the genesis of it is intuitively a little closer to Attica, or it's a little closer to me. Bluebird, Bluebird, those are her books. Right. Okay. You know, okay. I'm like, I'm here to be your wing person to, you know, okay. kind of like be your checkpoint. Right. But those are the same way in which, you know, there were parts of from scratch that were mine. I was like, I know this like nobody else. She knows Bluebird, mm -hmm. even though it's not based on a true story. Um, and so, her, you know, we are kind of finding our way. Then there's a project me. that we're adapting a Jasmine Guillory book called Drunk on Love. And yeah. that really is like. That's the one with Malcolm Lee, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 And yes. so that project, we kind of, you know, um, we have all kinds of ways into that project because it's characters we've never, you know, we have the, we have the source material in Jasmine's beautiful uh -huh. book. And now we are, you know, we, we're meeting those characters in a new way on screen. Mm -hmm. And so we have, you know, uh, it might begin with a glass of wine because <laughs> it's about <laughs> a Napa wine family, <laughs> you know, uh, or begin with music because we're each finding our access points. And I find that, you know, for me, my background as an actor means I'm always looking at the heartbeat and pulse of the characters and right, Attica's right. brilliance as both a novelist and, you know, a seasoned screenwriter is the turn and the plot points. And so together mm -hmm. we kind mm -hmm. of really, um, it's a nice partnership in that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With the the different um, formats or uh, uh, platforms, whatever you want to call it, that that are out there now. So you know, you, you guys, you're you've written, you're re writing books. You you there's the podcasts, the the series, the theatrical, you know, narrative film. Is there? Do you think about that as you're as you're starting a project, whether it's whether it's a, a former you know a, a book or or there was the former um, IP was there or is something brand new? Do you 
how do you guys think about where it's going to end up? Like this is a theatrical mm. film or this is a podcast series or this is a, a, ser- a you know, screening series or a, a streaming series. How do you think about it, kind of the end product? You, th- you know, to me, the we arrive at the end by being really close to what does this story need and what is going to serve mm-hmm. this story in the best way. And, um, and there are some stories that really are ongoing and need to right. be an ongoing right. series, right? Okay. Because they need that kind of open-ended exploration. And then there are stories that really are just limited. You can, this need, this is a long form film <laughs> that is over six uh-huh. hours or eight hours or whatever, you know? And um, so we kind of let the story decide. Mm-hmm. We let the story mm-hmm. decide, you know? I think if we... I mean, sure, there are, you know, um, we're, we're, we're discovering that we like to have our hand in different pots, if you will, you know, um, but effectively it's let the story decide what it's going to be. Um, and the reason why I love doing lifted the podcast for me is I like the intimacy of it. I like the long form hang out, explore, don't know where it's going to go, unscripted nature, and the discovery and curiosity in a way. uh, I I love that about podcasting, as I'm sure you very well know. And that is, you know, unique to podcasting. Yeah, yeah. It is just, you're not going to find it anywhere else in that way. Right, and it's the ability to sit down and have you said such an sometimes intimate conversation or you don't know where it's going to go with someone that you may never have met. And it's oh, such oh. a unique, oh, yeah. I mean, I learn something more than one thing in every podcast. And I find myself bringing up things like I brought up a couple things with you today that from a podcast I did two days ago yeah. that I like never would have like, it just Absolutely. like heated because these women are just, I mean, we as women and women, we meet, they're so interesting and have such stories and have such lessons for all of us. It's amazing. I, you know, if I could sit down and have a dinner party with all of this is like my virtual auditory listening experience of a right. cool dinner party, you know, experience that is yeah. what, what yeah. it kind of is. And I get to have these, these intimate conversations where, and for me, again, back to purity of purpose, I came to want to do lifted because I felt on the other side of having made from, on the other side of, first of all, being a caregiver, I'd learned so much. The other side of being three years, five years into widowhood, I'd learned a lot about loss, parenting through loss, being um, widowed. And I was like, gosh, and the creator in me, the artist in me is like, how do I express this, right? After we made the series, I was like, God, I learned so much from these women on set. Like these creators, these, these dynamic voices and vision, where can I share that? Like, how can I learn more? And that was really the genesis of the podcast was like, I just want to continue these conversations that I had been having informally on set. And I realized I I wanted to be women. I realized I wanted it around a central theme Mm -hmm. and that Mm -hmm. has led me here. And so the second season is all I'm talking to women in the food space. I'm clearly still pulling at the threads of things that are familiar to me, but also universal. And there are the themes of from scratch and these women across, you know, the shared thing, the common thing is they all work in and around the food space, either writing about it or Mm -hmm. being an entrepreneur and and making cupcakes that Mm -hmm. delight everyone or making wine or being an editor or a chef. But wow, the learnings, yeah. and I bring those learnings into my daily life and I bring them into absolutely. my professional life. Yeah, absolutely. No, you, you can't help it. And, and yeah, it, it's, there's so, there's just so much. There's so many, I mean, I love Lifted because of those same things. There's just so much, yeah, the, the podcast space is uh, is just so interesting and and i mean it really has changed so much and i love what you said about it it continues on because 
anything that we do in women in entertainment, I feel like my mind is always like, oh, we've got to get that person on the podcast. We've got to continue to, because it is, we've got to continue that conversation or we've got to, I want to meet them deeper because, you know, you're at an event and they're a speaker in a line. It's so hard to, but you know, when you feel that connection that needs to go deeper. Well, because again, it's an act of service. This yes. is an act of service because what we're doing is helping women. We're helping the next generation of women who right. are going to be coming up in this right. business. We're expanding the thoughts, um, the possibilities for what we can do, right? You know, people are listening to your podcast now who are going to be making the next generation and, right. and, and that the projects that we're all going to love. And it's because right. something that they will hear here mm -hmm. will seed an idea or open up a portal to a to the sense of a possibility of yeah. something that they can yeah. do. And that's why I love, thank you for having me on because I'm that story of, I was a journeyman actor who literally was like, I just wanna make my health insurance this year. <laughs> right, I just right. want, because I have a, a, you know, a husband at home who is, you know, who is, has a diagnosis. I have a small child. Like I, you know, I need that mm -hmm. to now being the person who is producing the shows that get to hire my fellow actors, get right. to bring in, you know, crews of people, get to, uh, and hopefully be, tell beautiful stories that bring joy, enlightenment, love, um, reflection to the world. And that's a, you know, I could not have seen this possibility for myself 10 years right. ago. Couldn't have really even fully seen it five years ago, right. if you want to be completely honest. And so there's someone out there who's like me, who's like, oh my gosh, I am, I'm doing this one thing, but what would it look like if? Yeah. No, it isn't. I think it's one thing with entertainment or the, you know, entertainment loosely, but we, this industry is so, it's so forward facing and people look at it like, oh, you're, you're doing something, whether it entertains me, whether I laugh, I cry, I scream, I do this. I love it because it entertains me. And one of the things that, you know, we really try to focus on at Women Entertainment is making sure that we're, we're looking, you know, below the line jobs. We're looking at below the line stories, all of this, because to your point, you are, you're now helping someone's livelihood because of your the production that we're talking about when they're asking you what does your team look like what is your you know and you're saying okay well i'm gonna hire you know i'm, I'm continue these women cinematographers in my writing room and what is you know what is my you know what do my craft services people look those are all that's livelihood that's jobs let alone what you're putting out for the the world to enjoy and to the you know the the content that that we all get to enjoy and how many millions of people that reaches i, I it's so unique to our industry yes and it's this beautiful ability to be able to as i said for me as the artist in the most pure form the same person i was as a kid who dreamed of being in television was like how can i move the world closer to love through my efforts as mm -hmm. an artist. And the other thing I get to do is as someone who is the creator, who's creating the work that's going to employ people, my job there right. is to let the work we do together also uplift your life. Right. And I don't say that lightly because, and I will go back and be very transparent and clear and say, I was the actor who was on set that was like, I hope we go until eight o'clock because then we're in overtime and I've made my health insurance. And right. that making health insurance would change and uplift the quality of my family's life. So right. I'm always aware that the work we do has direct impact mm -hmm. on families, and as a mother, right? And as a partner, as a wife, I, I, that is no small thing. It is and not. so I want, I hope people will come to work, enjoy the work they're doing, feel fulfilled, mm -hmm. and it enriched their lives. Right. Right. At, at, in, 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 in beautiful ways. 
No, it is. It's it's so important to look at, yeah, look at both sides. I mean, it's that in front of the camera, behind the camera, above, whatever you want to call it. Both sides of those things are are as important. And I know we are, I know we're so over time. This has been such a fascinating conversation and I've loved, loved getting to meet you, but I want to make sure we get out there. So we, from scratch, the series on Netflix, Lifted, we talked about, Bluebird, Bluebird coming. We mentioned Drunk on Love. What else? What, give a, tell us what else you're doing, what you're excited about, what we want, you want us to watch for. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Um, well, definitely, there's a couple of projects that I, you know, again, I don't want to jinx them because you know how yeah, these yeah. things, things are, you know, in, in motion. But our goal essentially is to um, give voice and space and platform to women's stories and women storytellers that we haven't seen. And particularly women of color, um, international stories. And that's kind of where Attica and I, our eye is trained because, uh, you know, it's kind of like my grandmother would say, you know, that old adage to whom much is given, much is required. <laughs> <laughs> and what I mean by that is, you know, you could look at that as like, oh, oh, heavy, but it's not heavy. What it means is, my goodness, I am here, but for the grace of many women who were like, hey, come along. We want to uplift. So now it, I'm doing the same thing. So the stories that we're looking at, there's, um, you know, again, I mentioned the the real person story that we might do. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, right, that's right. going to come together. Um, we are also looking at a few other books to okay. adapt um and we're just you know excited and we love this partnership with universal so it's it's, it's good, amazing good to me thank you so much and we are all going to sit in gratitude of our of our busyness and our uh, and our our just all of the, the plentiful things that are coming to us don't look at them as stress don't look at them as busyness but in gratitude that we're that we are busy and that we all have these things in our lives in front of us because that is the blessing that is is on us it is a blessing and it is um it is a privilege to be able to let your heart lead your life if you enjoyed this episode subscribe and leave a review on spotify and apple Podcasts. to stay up to date with in her words join the conversation by following women in entertainment on our social channels and subscribe to our weekly newsletter at womeninentertainment.com